Hello friends. Today we're talking about sharpening knives. And my go-to knife sharpening technique is my Spyderco bench stones. I have a, a medium and a fine and an ultra fine. And these do a great job, but on the Spyderco S30V, well, let's just say this steel has always given me a problem. It's very hard and I spend hours and hours and I just never see the results that I see on my other blade steels. Another sharpener I have is this Hapstone fixed angle sharpening system. But it's given me problems because most of my knives are Spyderco's and with the leaf shaped blade of the Spyderco when you put it on the magnet on the bed and get it far enough up to be secure the corners here on both sides of the bed are sticking out and the stone hits it. If I uh, if I try to put it further out towards the edge, there's not enough magnet to hold it securely and it wiggles. And if I try to use the clamp, well, I have to keep the clamp in the center and clamp one side of it, which is, is kind of awkward to do um, because you, the knife is pulling against the magnet. So you're trying to leave the knife hang out off the end of the bed and clamp it and keep it from wiggling. But once you sharpen one side and get it the way you want it, you're going to have to take the knife off and flip it around to the other side. And going back and forth, there's really no way to index it unless you put tape on it and put arrows with a magic marker. You're not going to get the knife back in the same place it was before. But I have an idea for a small modification that I think is going to help with these spider code knives. But before we start, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. It's what keeps the channel going. Thank you. So what I'm thinking here is I want to add a uh, backup plate that's going to sit behind the blade on the bed and it's going to help index the blade as well as help keep the, uh, the blade from rocking back and forth while I'm working the, uh, the sharpening arm. So I'm using this cardboard and I'm laying my knives down on the bed and looking at um, the different shapes of my spider code knives and it, it, all of a sudden I mean it, it instantly gives you this the shape that I want to use there I need a um, kind of a pointed edge to help keep them from rocking around like that and this is the shape I came up with and what I've done is I've taken the cardboard and uh, trace it onto some 1 8 inch thick aluminum stock I had and cut it out on my bandsaw. Uh, cleaned it up on my belt sander uh, to make a clean piece and now I'm going to take my drill and tap that I bought at Home Depot. This is a 632nd and I'm going to take these 632nd pan head screws and uh, use that to mount my spacer onto the bed of this Hapstone sharpener. So of course I got to take the sharpener apart and uh, take the legs off, take the clamp off, take the arm off, and um, that way I can get it level in my drill press and drill these holes. I will say the Hapstone sharpener system is well made. I believe it's been made over in Ukraine and they do a great job. They use great hardware everything. This magnet that's in the bed, it is super strong gave me a hard time getting out but I got this little steel square and I just used the base of it to grab a hold of that magnet and use the magnet strength itself to lift the magnet out of the bed so um, now I'm taking I'm gonna call up my spacer plate I'm taking the spacer plate and setting it on the bed and I'm gonna take my time and really lay this thing out and put it exactly where I want it and you know the old saying measure twice cut once so I'm using my little square and I'm gonna line everything up use a magic marker to mark the bed um, all that magic marker will clean off easily later but um, my idea here is I want to be able to take that spacer plate use the pointed edge for my spider coves use the straight edge for my kitchen knives my bench mates my ZTs Everything that's got a traditional spine, um, I still could use the backup plate. Um, so, 
here I am, I'm just making sure everything's centered and uh, you know, using my square again, I'm checking it, double checking it, triple checking it and if it doesn't line up, of course uh, you sometimes you gotta lay it down and you gotta give it a few love taps to get exactly where you want it and once I do, I tighten that clamp down again and make sure it's not going to move and now I uh, I just mark my holes I want the uh, screw hole to be in between the edge of the clamp and the edge of the bed that way the clamps not going to hit here I am just marking my holes with a center punch and now my drill bit's not going to walk move over to the drill press and I start with the smallest bit. This is the, the bit that came in with the tap. So this is the proper size hole to drill for that 3 32nd uh, diameter thread. So easy pressure. I could have used a little cut in oil. It probably would have made it a little smoother, but I'm not really worried about it. I only paid $8 for the set. I got a drill doctor so I can sharpen that bit later if it gets dull. And plus this is aluminum and mild steel. It's not like I'm drilling through anything crazy here. Just take your time. Go slow so you don't bend the bit. And, um, and what I'm doing here is I'm coming back with a larger bit. This is what's going to allow the screw to go through the aluminum plate um, because the, the first drill bit's too small. You know, it's got the threads. So I'm just opening that hole up to allow the uh, the threads on the screw to pass freely through the plate and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back with a, uh, a countersink bit and this is what's going to allow the screw heads to um, sit flush with the top of the plate and not protrude up. Now I did buy oval heads instead of flat head by mistake but next trip to Home Depot I'll get some flat head screws and um, they'll be truly sound kind of sunk. As you see in this video, they're oval heads, so they're going to stick up slightly. So now I'm taking my tap and my tap holder and just, you know, making sure it's perpendicular and uh, adding some oil to it. Uh, generally, you know, the way you screw up here is you break the tap, and that usually happens when you first start because you don't have it perpendicular to the hole and the other time when you break it is generally as you're coming out the bottom side of the hole or you're hitting the bottom of the hole and some of that metal is uh, working its way out the bottom so keep adding oil even pressure you feel too much pressure back it up you don't want to lock it in there just back and forth back and forth that's how you work a tap and uh, I like to feel as it's coming out the bottom. Like I said, that's sometimes you got to get under there and make sure there's not a burr. And then just uh, work it all the way through the hole and make sure the threads are nice and clean and and um, your bolt's going to go in there without hanging up or anything. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get that tap out of the way. Just going to clean up the uh, the plate with a little sandpaper here and make sure the the burrs from the holes that were drilled in there aren't protruding out and keeping the plate from sitting level on the sharpener bed and uh, later we're going to remove the magic marker with the same piece of sandpaper make sure everything's clean and make sure it bolts to the bed like we want it to before we go back to the table and once again like I said I bought uh, oval head screws instead of flat head screws so they're not going to be a hundred percent countersunk but they're going to work for now I'll change those out later after I pick some other ones up at Home Depot but um, they go in nice and tight and uh, they're the perfect length so we're about ready to go and start assembling this bad boy. Yep. Perfect. Okay, that's good. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, this 226 from CRC is my favorite 
corrosion inhibitor. It's uh, it's nice and thin. It doesn't have any bad odor, and uh, it's not it doesn't hurt plastic at all. I use it on my outboard motors. It's all electronic safe. Everything. Buy it uh, six at a time. You know from the arena. So let's go ahead and put the legs on here. Get everything screwed back on with our Allen head screws. Get the, the bottom leg. And keep cleaning everything, lubricating it. That way uh, we don't have any issues down the road. And get the magnet back in, the magnet cover. And uh, make sure we lubricate those bolts good. There's a little bit of corrosion on there. That'll take care of that. Screw these bad boys back down. And get them good and tight because we're not planning on taking this off anytime soon. Clean it up, make everything look pretty. And make sure we get our new plate back on there and we can try it out. Had to take it off to get to the leg screw. And we're getting close to the moment of truth. All right, let's take the uh, Paramilitary 2, look at that, it just sits on there perfectly. And uh, the magnet's pretty strong. And, um, you know, the pair of 2, the way the, uh, the blade is machined, it's got a double uh, distal taper, is what they call it. So it kind of indexes it itself, uh, now that I have that on there. But I want to see if the clamp's going to hold it, which it doesn't, because the... Uh, the eighth inch stock that I made the spacer out is too thick for the taper on the pair of two. So the only way to use the clamp on this is to slide that pair of two on over and use the handle. Um, the handle starts against the bed as the index and that'll give me enough clamp on that flat part of the blade to keep it from wiggling around. So the back spacer and the clamp are just grabbing it right there by the spidey hole. Well, all right, friends, uh, it's time to wrap this video up. It got a little long-winded there. Um, it's late, and uh, hopefully you're still with me, but we're gonna cut this one and start a new video sh showing the uh, pair of two being sharpened. I bought some Venez embedded diamond stones that I wanna try out. That's one of the main reasons I wanted to get this uh, hapstone sharpener back out and give it a shot. So the next video is going to be us actually using the diamond stones on the pair of two S30V steel and see if that does any better. So stay tuned for that. Also don't forget we have two knife giveaways. The Benchmade tagged out. The K-Bar Folding Hunter. Uh, we're giving the Folding Hunter away this weekend to one of my subscribers. So. Once again, that's a good reason to stay subscribed to the channel and uh, be entered into the knife giveaway. So, thanks for watching and uh, hope you enjoyed and have a good one.